join us singing our opening hymn number 238, Lord, who throughout these 40 days, number 238, please stand. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we gather as God's people, God's chosen people, chosen to follow the path of goodness and of light, the light of Jesus Christ. Let us humbly now acknowledge our sinfulness and open our hearts to receive the mercy of God. You were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, 
your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out, took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught in, by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over 
for us all. How will he not give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Christ Jesus, it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus along with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what the rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. phrase in today's gospel of Peter, James, and John after witnessing the wonderful, glorious transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain was, Lord, it's so good. It's certainly good for us to be here. Let us erect three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Uh, that exclamation of the three closest disciples to Jesus is a, uh, a reminder that when we come together, it's God's family that we behold through the gift of faith, the glorious vision of our risen Lord, and it is good for us to be here. Even in the midst of our second Sunday of Lent, as we take on that spiritual discipline, uh, those ways in which we are strengthening our heart, our soul, our mind with the gift of faith through our observance of Lent. 
Many of you uh, are aware that I, I do like to ski. I like to downhill ski. It's one of my uh, favorite sports. Uh, and because of that, I have a, an affection uh, for watching the Olympics. Uh, I do watch a lot of the, uh, the competition. My preference is to watch the downhill skiing and uh, even the snowboarding events, uh, the freestyling. Uh, but the one thing I don't like about the Olympics is the ice skating. Something about it I just don't uh, have a, an aff uh, affiliation for. Uh, I'd actually watch, uh, rather watch, uh, what is the, uh, the, the, when they throw the stone. Uh, <laughs> curling, yeah, I like to watch curling more than I like that. So, give you a little window. But if you like skating, God bless you. Uh, you see it, and it's wonderful. Uh, but the one thing I heard this past week uh, caught my attention was a story about an ice skater. Uh, one of the woman ice, women ice skaters that represent the United States, uh, Mirai Nagasu. Perhaps you heard the same story that uh, she was one of the promising uh, athletes on our uh, United States women's skating team and uh, she was the one that was to truly perform well so that we would win a gold medal. Uh, but uh, the first attempt that she took at uh, landing a triple axle, uh, whatever that is, I think I know, it's a three times spin, uh, that she fell. And obviously with that, uh, her score uh, was lowered, and, but she still needed to skate out her routine with the understanding that she had blown it uh, for not only herself and family, her teammates and her country. Uh, but what caught my attention uh, was the interview that she gave when it was all finished. And the reporter asked her, well, how did you feel? What were you thinking after you uh, knew that you did not have any hope to win the gold? And she said, well, I started thinking about it as my audition for Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> and for any athlete, for any competitor, to hear those words, uh, although on some level you can understand, they just didn't ring right. It was something incongruent with that response because you would expect the response to be, I made a mistake, I'm disappointed, I let my teammates down. But to say it's my audition for Dancing with the Stars, it's almost like it really didn't mean anything to you. I use that example to illustrate, think of window into why Lent is important for us as Catholics. Because we get one chance in life to do what God wants us to do and intends us to do. Each one of us in here wants to do our very best at our vocation in this world. Parents, grandparents, as a single person, in any way in which you find yourself supporting a loved one, caring for a loved one, we pour out our hearts in service and love because this is what God asks us to do, for us to be faithful. And the season of Lent, particularly the readings we have throughout the season of Lent, reminds us of people, the heroes of Scripture, that did what God asked of them to do. Remember last week, Noah, God asking Noah to build an ark when it seemed to be the most silliest request in the world, but yet because Noah was faithful to what God asked of him, he was saved from the flood and received the blessing of God above that never again would God destroy the earth by a flood. God's Word this weekend picks up that same theme where we have another hero of Scripture continuing on in the book of Genesis, the father of faith, Abraham, who was obedient to God, leaving a land to dwell where God had put him with his beloved wife, Sarah. And because Abraham was so generous to the alien, the foreigners, the three visitors who came by, showed hospitality to them, Abraham and Sarah were blessed, blessed with a son, Isaac. 
the star of their hearts and souls. And today's passage of Genesis pushes Abraham to another level of faith. After he has been blessed with a son, God asks something else of Abraham, something more ridiculous than Noah building an ark. To take this son, your blessing, your hope, your future, go up this mountain, build an altar, and kill him. Give me your all. Abraham obeys, trusts that if he does what God asks of him somehow, God will turn this into a blessing. And as we hear the entire passage, just as Abraham is about to kill his son, a messenger from God tells him to stop, don't follow through. And as the passage concludes, because Abraham was obedient to the covenant, his descendants would be as numerous as the stars. Another example of how the God of Scripture blesses those who are faithful to the covenant. This is the way in which we are to see the miracle of transfiguration when Jesus went up the mountain with Peter, James, and John and is transfigured before their eyes. He is teaching these three disciples that you're going to have one shot at this in life. You better land it. Because if you land it, there's gold awaiting for you. Gold in the kingdom of, in, of heaven. The transfiguration is just a little taste for Peter, James, and John of what awaits them if they continue to follow the Lord. And we are given the key to understanding this passage when Jesus concludes with saying, don't tell anyone about this until I have been raised from the dead. Because until Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day rose again and appeared to the disciples, only then could they understand the transfiguration as a mirror of what is going to happen to every person on earth who follows the way of Jesus. And so my brothers and sisters, you and I gather on a second Sunday of Lent being challenged by the church to pray, to fast, to discipline our hearts, to be more charitable, perhaps spending more time in quiet. Those are all spiritual exercises, strengthening our ability, allowing God to fashion and form our lives to do what he is calling us to do, and thus continuing the legacy of faith begun by Noah, and Abraham, the church, the new way, begun by Peter, James, and John, all because, as we are gathered here today, that voice that came from the cloud of heaven, the voice of God our Father, this is my chosen son, listen to him. Lent is there to train us to stop listening to other voices that would lead us astray, lead us from following the path to the kingdom. We gather to hear the good news that we are people of a covenant called to be faithful to the way of Christ because we have been promised by the Lord that if we follow him faithfully through difficulties, through pain, through sacrifice, there is a crown of glory that awaits us that Jesus our Savior 
will be there to share with us in the kingdom of heaven. You can just remain seated, please. There are two purple binders. Some magician switched them, so we have to get a second purple binder. But while you're waiting, I really do have two announcements that I need to make at the end of Mass, so to sort of take up this time, I want to share with you two homework assignments for you this coming week. One, I ask you to do tomorrow. If you find yourself free and having some time uh, at a computer and a phone, uh, Tomorrow is an important day for our church in the country uh, because we, the bishops are taking an initiative to have faithful call their Congress, their, their senator and congressman in DC, in support of immigrants, the dreamers who are in our country, who because they are children of the Father are here and truly need a voice, an advocate to support them, to encourage our legislature in DC to look at the law of the land and to, if you are so inclined uh, to learn about uh, alternate legislation that will enable the dreamers to remain here legally, uh, to truly uh, uh, live out their dreams for themselves and their family, uh, we are encouraging you to uh, go to a computer and go to our diocesan website and there are instructions there uh, and to uh, call uh, our senators uh, in Washington, D.C., as well as our representative, and encourage them to support uh, the Dreamers with crafting legislation in their support. Uh, the second uh, bit of homework is uh, that we are in the Lenten season every year as Catholics called to support our diocesan Lenten appeal. You've all received information in the mail. As pastor, I'm asking you to make a sacrificial gift and even a pledge to this initiative because as a parish, uh, we not only need to support our diocese, but over and beyond that this year, uh, we need to replace our windows up in the, uh, above the roof. Uh, what we've learned is that that's really a cause of a lot of the leaking that occurs. Our roof has been fixed. Thanks to last year's Diocesan Lenten Appeal, now we need to fix the windows that are above us so that our entire roof is good. Uh, because for some reason, we've had a lot of rain. I think uh, that reading from Noah, about Noah last week uh, was more than just a scripture reading. We've had a lot of rain and uh, kind of surfaced the fact that we do need, it's an urgent uh, part of our uh, physical plant to keep uh, our church uh, safe from being uh, threatened by uh, all of the rain. So I ask you seriously uh, to take this week uh, to look at your diocesan Lenten appeal uh, and respond generously in support of that appeal this year. Okay, thank you. God, thank you. Okay. Reverend Father, I now present to you the candidates who seek to complete their Christian initiation. They have found strength in God's grace and support in our community's prayers and example. Now they ask that after this Lenten season, they be admitted to confirmation and the Eucharist. Will you who desire to participate fully in the sacramental life of the church, come forward with your sponsor. Karen Dioria, Megan Stouffer,
Karen and Megan, the Christian life and the demands that flow from the sacraments cannot be taken lightly. As I shared with you, we get one chance to do this Christian thing right. Therefore, uh, before granting you your request to share fully in the church's sacraments, it is important that the church hear the testimony of your sponsors about your readiness. Have they faithfully listened to the apostles' instruction proclaimed by the church? Have they come to a deeper appreciation of their baptism in which they were joined to Christ and his church? And have they reflected sufficiently on the tradition of the church, which is their heritage, and joined their brothers and sisters in prayer? And have they advanced in a life of love and service to others? And now I speak to you, Karen and Megan, Our assembly, are you ready to support the testimony expressed about these candidates and include them in your prayer and affection as we move toward Easter? We are. Karen and Megan, the church recognizes your desire to be sealed with the gift of the Spirit and to have a place at Christ's Eucharistic table. Join with us throughout the remainder of this Lent in a spirit of repentance Hear the Lord's ongoing call to conversion and be faithful to your baptismal covenant. Thanks be to God. And sponsors, continue to support these candidates with your guidance and concern. May they see in you a love for the church and a sincere desire in doing good. Lead them this Lent to the joys of the Easter mysteries. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, in beginning this period of Lent, we look forward to celebrating at Easter the life-giving mysteries of our Lord's suffering and death and resurrection. These candidates, whom we bring with us to the Easter sacraments this year, will look to us for an example of Christian renewal. Let us pray to the Lord for them and for ourselves that we may be renewed by one another's efforts and together come to share the joys of Easter. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the church, as we continue on our Lenten journey, may the Lord lead us to a deeper conversion from sin, and may we experience more deeply his mercy and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For heads of state and elected leaders, may they be led by the Spirit as they work for justice and peace. Above personal gain and ambition, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the suffering among us, may they be drawn from the compassionate love of family and neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. For married couples and for those preparing for marriage, may they grow in love and fidelity and always be able to forgive each other let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have been afflicted by the recent shooting in Florida, the deceased and wounded, their families and loved ones, for the first responders and the entire South Florida community. May God grant them healing as we once again face a na as a nation another act of violence and horrifying evil we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our dearly departed, including Frank and Rose Stangle. May they rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for our candidates. Father of love and power, it is your will to establish everything in Christ and to draw us into his all-embracing love. Guide these chosen ones, strengthen them in their vocation, build them into the kingdom of your Son, and seal them with the Spirit of your promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we present our gifts, please join in singing from your Lenten purple worship aid, O Beauty Ever Ancient.
And pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. And you are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, 
who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together we offer the prayer to the Father that his Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be you. to God. Please join us in our closing hymn number 240, Hosea, number 240.